one thing that is my pet peeve that has, I used to have a lot of chronic back pain issues. So I would try to find these accounts that, you know, were showing mobility drills and all these like dorky, annoying, corrective issue, like corrective exercises. You know, they, I went down that rabbit hole and I'm like, dude, none of this stuff is helping me at all. And then I just found, so I just, I just like stuck with the basics and got stronger. Like I just did pull-ups, face pulls, uh, just worked my, like, you know, basic movements, squats, yeah. deadlifts, and just, you know, started gaining muscle. And it's like, oh, wow, my back feels so much better. I didn't need to do all those dorky uh, <laughs> yeah. Corrective, yeah. corrective exercises and stuff like that. And yeah. Yeah. What, what came with that when I was going down that rabbit hole was this fragility mindset. You know, if you do that, you're going to wreck your shoulders. If you do that, you're going to herniate a disc and blow your back out. I broke my back. What do you mean by that? You my broke back, back is broken. What, a, a vertebrae or, or well, what portion? Spinal. In the fear mongering around exercises, it just, it honestly, it caused me, like, I feel like it was psychological where it was like, oh, I think my back is hurt. Spinal. Because I did, because uh, I rounded my back and you, you yeah. brought up. You brought up the rounded back deadlift. Like people were uh, sh shitting on your form or whatever in certain videos. Yeah. And to me, it's like I already know that there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with rounding your back. Your back is supposed to round. Can your back handle it or can't? Like if you if yeah. you've been, I would argue that someone like you who lifts with more of a rounded back, you probably if you tried to straighten your back out would hurt yourself. You know yeah, I mean? like I I feel worse in extension so i'm not only weaker but it feels worse yeah and you know everyone's spine is a little bit different and yeah sure some people might have issues when they're very rounded you know the key is going to be having that that strong and stable core regardless of the position that you're in mm -hmm. um and so for me personally the only time i've ever felt anything in my back wasn't from deadlifting and i've deadlifted millions of kilos like that you would you would think oh there would be some issue by now. No, no issues, no pain, nothing, no symptoms or anything. Um, the only thing was like overhead pressing where it's the opposite. Instead yeah. of rounding, you're actually like potentially arching back. And that's the only yeah. time I've ever been like, yeah, I'm not going to, uh, that, that didn't feel quite right. So you sort of have to go by feel. And I think you can adapt to a variety of positions. The thing is you can't, market or sell or promote these basic movements i mean you can there are there are you know starting strength barbell medicine like there are companies and and, and ways to uh make money from the basic movements but it's much more lucrative to be contrarian to say hey no these don't work you have to do this special bosu ball twisting thing because of look at look at that's the thing if you have a skeleton in the video the normies love it. They're just like, oh yeah, this 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 guy knows this shit. If you're a doctor, holy shit, game over. You know, yeah. it doesn't matter if you're a doctor of like, I don't know, herbology or something. If you're a doctor and you can put doctor in your name and YouTube, fucking game over. Oh my god, people are just. I'm considering getting a doctor and doctorate in Chinese medicine. <laughs> doctor Jeffrey Verity Schofield. Oh my god, my followers would. Fucking explode. Well, Drupal, <laughs> um, so the minute you have a doctor and people are just like, oh, oh, this guy must know what he's talking about, even if you know he looks like a sheet of iceberg lettuce and when he just you know no thickness to him at all. He doesn't even look like he lifts, and, and he's a doctor though. So um, and then a lot of that is just placebo. So you add this exercise in and you know, you believe it works and therefore you feel better because, you know, for, for most normal people, belief is very, very important. If you're an elite athlete, or at least just, you know how to push yourself, belief is no longer a limiting factor. Like if you actually know how to push yourself, it's not like you can believe you'll get more reps and you will because you're already pushing hard. But mm -hmm. if you're a normal person who doesn't know how to push hard anyway, having more self-belief can help you get more reps or to help you just feel better in general because you don't already have that self-belief. And so getting it from, you know, a face pull or, or some kind of weird dumbbell external rotation or something, you know, that can help. Plus a lot of it is just blood flow and movement in general. And, you know, sometimes just time you have an issue 
and it would have resolved itself anyway. Yeah. But you added this in and like, this is what did it. It wasn't the time. It wasn't like you reducing the weight on your bench press or something, which mm -hmm. is what actually helped. It was this new magic restorative exercise. And, and the guys making these exercises, by and large, they know they're bullshit. It's just more content and more clicks and like, I there's know. always a market that's for injured the, that's people. That's the stuff that bugs me because I was a, personally a sucker to that for a little bit. And now I'm like, you pieces of shit. You're just making this stuff up to, you know, this exercise you've never seen before is going to be a game changer. It's like, well, no, it's not. <laughs> you know, there's the a thing, reason. The thing is like a lot of these guys are creating the issues that they're also solving. So it's this endless loop of like, don't internally rotate. You're, you'll hurt your shoulder. And then people are so, they have this, again, fragile mindset, as you said. And so they think that they're, they're because pain is very, it, it's more complex than people think. It's not just yeah. pain equals tissue damage. A lot of it has to do with your mental state and, and just your belief at, at, you know, how your body is working or not working. And so people think that they're injured when they're not actually injured. And I've experienced this with clients, you know, where someone says, I get a, a message in my DMs from a client and someone is like, oh, my, my knee hurts when warming up for squats. And I won't see the message because I'm sleeping if there's a time difference or something. And then 20 minutes later, I'll get another DM saying, never mind, I hit a new PR. <laughs> like, you weren't injured. You, It's just like, you know, it's, it's worth paying attention to. But yeah. Some people are just so sensitive to that, those signals, because they've heard of it so many times mm. that like everything is a potential injury. So. Mm. Well, that, that's the thing for me. I was in a, I was in a spot where I was thinking about it. Like I was hyper-focused on, oh, I don't want to do that. Cause like, oh, last time I did that, it, or I, I, that could tweak my back and put me out for a little bit or whatever. And it got to the point where I didn't train hard because of that. You know, I'd be like, I can only train until my form and my form needs to be meticulous. My form needs to be perfect, you know, but now it's like, no, dude, I just go in there. I like shake my arms around a bit. I, I do like, you know, I just start light on whatever movement. I hardly have any kind of warm up other than the just working up to my working set on each yeah. movement. And I feel so much better than I've ever felt. Rarely have any kind of chronic pain issue every once in a while, like the right side of my back will act up, but it's like very, very seldom. And it doesn't yeah. cause, it doesn't cause me any real issues. And, and now I can actually train hard because I don't care if that, that last grinder rep doesn't look pretty. I'm not going to yeah. blow my shoulder out because I've, I've been doing this enough that no, I, I can't, I know my body, right. And I'm not, I'm not scared. And when people are scared that they're going to hurt themselves or they feel like pain equals my spine is broken, that's actually causing more harm than good. In yeah, I know. I 100% agree. When people ask me about my warm up for squats, my answer is squats. <laughs> yeah. You know, I just start with the bar and then I, I add weight. Same thing with bench press. Same thing with deadlifts, except, you know, I start with 135 because of the plates on the ground. But yeah, I don't think I've ever done any kind of warm up like that in the past couple of years. Like it's, it's walking to the gym as a general warm up <laughs> yeah. and like that's that's the general warm up and then it's you know just doing the movement with lighter weights and just <clears throat> and i think it's important to do that because you you, you want to feel how your body is moving right like you should still listen to your body um it's just not to be so sensitive yeah hypersensitive is the best word for it where you're like oh i didn't feel this moving correctly therefore i should go back down and just use the bar and some, mm -hmm. some, some, I mean, you look at squat university, oh. they've advocated some bizarre, oh. bizarre stuff. Like his posts are either like startlingly obvious or like just fear mongering bullshit. It's like, there's yeah. no, there's I no middle. Game. I, you know, he's got good content. I'm not gonna, I don't want to like attack yeah. him personally or whatever. It's just that, that kind of content. I'm, it's so, it's such a, you're creating a barrier of entry that is so high like the cost is so high that no one wants to work out like if you don't if you like it's like dude most people just need to like like a person can a squat with subpar form but as long as they can handle the load it's not going to 
break them, right? In most cases. Yeah. I'm not saying that's not an absolute, obviously, but you know, it's not I could lift with subpar form or I could yeah. you your body could get used to a, a multitude of different movements and and exercises, but it's, it's just yeah, your body's used to moving a certain way. And uh, to, to take it back to the uh, low back thing, that's one thing that I've been thinking about a lot is the heat and squat university talks about this, like the demonization of spinal flexion of any kind. You yeah. post, you posted that thing on, uh, I think it might be the last post on your Instagram where you were yeah, doing yeah. like a, a rounded back. It was like a Jefferson deadlift. What, what's that yeah. called? Like, so do you just make it up? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind of. So it's, it's similar to a Jefferson curl. So Jefferson curl is, well, we all know what a deadlift is. Uh, a Jefferson curl is where you have usually a light weight in your hands and then you're starting standing fully upright and then you you start rounding from the upper back and you just round disc by disc by disc all the way until you are fully flexed over mm -hmm. and your hips are also fully flexed and you're getting a hamstring stretch. And so usually you do it standing on, you know, plates or a block or something to get more range of motion. And you might, you might use, you know, a kettlebell or, or, you know, maybe just the bar in order to get a little bit more resistance to help pull you down into that weighted stretch. And then you go back up and usually you do slow and controlled reps. And, you know, I, I was doing this where it's, I was using a hundred kilos. Yeah, that was, that was reasonably heavy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, 225 ish. So, yeah. yeah so fairly heavy. I mean, I, I could go heavier. But that's one of those things where you don't you don't want to go super heavy on it, right? Because again, the load management and the fatigue management and the volume are all going to be at least as important as the technique. Whereas you know a lot of these these channels and accounts, they only focus on the technique, and they they sort of ignore everything else, like the background and and the physical preparedness, that kind of stuff. It's just how pretty does this look compared to the textbook? You know, how, how, how textbook form are you using? And luckily the industry is sort of gradually moving away from that, I think. But a lot of these big accounts are still promoting the, you know, a 650 pound ugly squat is worse than a 500 pound normal squat. Yeah. yeah I'm, just show, I'm just showing this for people that want to see. <clears throat> yeah. Like it's pretty much like, a hybrid of a Jess Jefferson curl and a deadlift. Yeah. So I'm just chilling down there. Yeah. Most people, you know, squat university would say this is going to kill your back, but have you ever had back problems? Never. That's interesting. Yeah. Never. <laughs> and I, I would say this, this kind of thing, it's not something I would generally recommend starting with load, but the load management is the key aspect to it because if you did this with no loading at all just using you know your arms and torso and and head as resistance and you ask people is this dangerous they would say no right it just no like how is that dangerous he's just like he's just stretching he's just moving in space mm -hmm. with no loading what about the bar now it's 20 kilos 45 fish pounds pulling down is that dangerous a lot of people would say no. It's all relative. Like yeah. 20 kilos might get someone injured if they're completely unprepared and they've never lifted a weight in their life. And that's like a very, very heavy weight to them. You know, an, an Olympic champion, you know, they might do 150 kilos with this, you know, if they're far stronger than me or, or perhaps even more. I don't know. It depends on, on, you know, if they can actually feel the movement and if they're doing it correctly for them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's the load management is is super important on, in in this case, and I think the body can adapt. Um, it's just a question of being conservative and then giving, you know, giving it time.